There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless waves. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. There are souls to rescue. There are souls to save. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. Send the light. We will spread. We will spread the everlasting light with the wind. With the wind. Heart in hand. Heart in hand. Giving God. Giving God the glory. Evermore we will follow, we will follow his command. Send the light, send the light, the, the blessed, blessed gospel, gospel light. light. Let it shine, let it shine. From shore to shore, from shore to shore. Send the light, send the light, and let it change your beams like the world, like the world forevermore. Today's speaker is none other than Dr. Nozipo Ngomalo. Dr. Ngomalo is a retired consultant of the Ohio Department of Education in Columbus, Ohio. She holds a doctoral degree in education administration, policy, and leadership. Masters of Science in Counseling and Psychology, a Bachelor's of Arts in psychology and social work, and a postgraduate certificate in marriage and family life from Andrews University Theological Seminary in Bering Springs, Michigan. Dr. Omalo is a veteran on the marriage journey. She has invested her talents in mentoring young couples through pre and post marital counseling, symposia in family dynamics, presenting at enrichment seminars and retreats, and a keynote speaker at wedding reception. As an educator, Dr. Momalo believes, education is a lifelong process, mostly occurring beyond the traditional classroom setting. She embraces a positive philosophy of life that there is a genius in all of us, packed with an untapped potential to excel given the right conditions, opportunity, and support. As a spouse, Dr. Omalo embraces a Christ-centered home, marriage, and family life. She firmly believes that once an individual, spouse, parent, or child, falls away from Christ, which is the true vine, he or she can do anything evil at that point. If the family member, spouse, parent, or child rejects God, then who are you that he or she cannot reject you as well? As a marriage therapist, Dr. Omalo believes that marriage is destined to thrive, but is left to die in the hands of two people in it. For this reason, she authored a book, Pillars of Joy in Marriage, Looking at Marriage in Heaven's Eyes, a how-to-do manual to help individuals develop an integrated perspective of what marriage is all about, not to fear it, nor take it for granted either. Thus, her book, Pillars of Joy in Marriage, is designed to revitalize the marriage potential and help couples to make sustainable behavioral and spiritual adjustments in their relationship. Dr. Omalo, we are at the edge of our seat waiting to hear what message you have for us from the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Most Gracious Father, we thank you for bringing us here together again this week to hear from the lips of your maid servant, Dr. Omalo. We praise your name. We give you honor and glory for all that you've done for us since we've been apart this past week. And we bless your name for all that you will do and continue to do in our lives. Please give us an open heart that we may receive wondrous things from your law. Please help us to understand the words from your maidservant and implement it into our lives according to your will. We praise your name, we give you honor and glory, and we welcome you into this place. 
In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to the bosom fly. While the billows near me roll, while the tempest still is high. the black stick. People were very afraid of Joseph in his village in the African country of Tanzania. People were very afraid of Joseph in many other places in Tanzania as well. 
In fact, people were afraid of Joseph in other countries in East Africa and even as far away as Norway. Joseph was a witch doctor. People who did not know the God of Heaven asked Joseph to heal them and their loved ones. People who did not know the God of Heaven asked Joseph to put curses on their enemies. Joseph owned a black stick that he kept in a special place in his house. He used the black stick when people asked him to heal someone. He used the black stick when people asked him to curse someone. He believed that the black stick had special power. He thought that his life was hidden in the black stick. People were afraid of Joseph's black stick. But even more than the stick, they were afraid of Joseph. They believed that he even had the power to kill by simply pointing his finger at someone. What people didn't realize was that Joseph didn't have any special power, the power that they thought he had came from evil angels. Still, no one dared to say a word against Joseph. Not in Tanzania. Not in other East African countries and not in Norway, where Joseph once traveled to practice his witchcraft. Then Seventh-day Adventists came to Joseph's village. They invited Joseph and other villagers to listen to sermons about the God of Heaven. Joseph was curious, and he went. As he listened, the power of God touched his heart. He decided to give his heart to God and be baptized. The preacher was delighted that Joseph wanted to live for the God of Heaven. But he told him that he needed to burn all his wicked charms. Joseph owned many charms that he used to practice his witchcraft. The pastor said Joseph should burn his charms in front of all the village. Joseph agreed under one condition. You can burn everything but not the black stick, he said. He said his life was hidden in the black stick and he would die if the stick was destroyed. The preacher assured him that he would not die. Your life is not hidden in the power of the devil, but in the power of Jesus. You won't be harmed if you only trust the Savior. Joseph and the preacher spoke for a short time. Finally, Joseph agreed to burn all his charms, including the black stick. A big bonfire was set up in the village. Joseph tossed his charms into the flames as the villagers watched in amazement. The man who had frightened them with his witchcraft was now destroying his witchcraft in the fire. The man whom they had feared so much now feared the God of Heaven. Joseph did not look like a scary witch doctor as he watched the bonfire. A big smile stretched across his face as he joyfully leaped around the flames. In an upraised hand, he held a Bible. Watching villagers sang praises to the Lord. Joseph didn't waste any time in sharing his new love for the God of Heaven. Shortly after his baptism, he introduced a friend, who also was a witch, doctor, to God. He also was baptized. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help build a new building at the University of Arusha in Tanzania so more pastors can be trained to preach the love of Jesus to witch doctors and others in Africa. Thank you for planning a generous offering.
Baba Bangi Yabonga Nage Kisi Oya Sengi address the topic for today, I come to you as a wife of 52 years, a mother, an educator, and a marriage counselor. So expect to learn with me as we go. My presentation is centered around a basic, most widely used word, love, globally. Yet, we do not have the same common understanding of love, what it really is and what it looks like. So the topic for today, what is love? But the question is, why is love so misunderstood, misused, and abused? The main reasons are we tend to apply love with the same sentiment towards anything and everything without variation or intensity. For instance, we do good deeds as well as horrific things in the name of love. Others abuse, cheat, and kill under the so-called love. Listen how we commonly express love. I love my sweater. I love my shoes. I love roses. I love cheesecake. I love my dog. I love my house. I love my car. I love my parents. I love my spouse. I love my teacher. I love God. Hmm. Do we love all these the same way? to a degree of intensity? Really? Can we tell which one of this love is most precious to us? Here, love is loosely defined to express the same sentiments towards objects, people, and situation in like manner. This is why we have difficulty understanding love and its true meaning or accepting love from others. Even in relationships, I love you has lost its meaning. Given the reasons I expressed, the next step to understand is what love really looks, up, looks like. We will examine love in the lenses 
of philosophical biblical perspective. The biblical definition of love in Galatians 5 verse 22 refers to love as fruits as fruit of the spirit exhibited by qualities such as peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. You remember in Hebrews 11 verse 6, God says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Webster defines love as a feeling of attachment that commands admiration, preeminent kindness, or devotion to one another, a profound tenderness and passion for another. Scholars, biblical scholars, have broken down love and loving into four different categories. First, agape, a Christ-like love that is selfless, sacrificial, unconditional. And in the context of marriage, spouses need to embrace the culture of agape as well by practicing selflessness and unconditional, unconditional love. Unconditional love means looking beyond, for example, your mate's fault to address a need. The second one is philo, benevolent, kindly, brotherly love. It is a close bond of friendship or a trusted, of a trusted confidant. Philo can also apply to spousal love when a mate is considered as a best friend. The third definition is eros. This is character characterized by intense physical, emotional, and sensual intimacy between a husband and a wife only. Stoje is the fourth. Love among family members, mother and child, father and son, brother and sister. Stoje can include husband and wife as well by exhibiting a posture of kindness, loving and caring spirit, as opposed to being mean, heartless and ruthless to each other. The next question is, why is love normally misunderstood? Number one, sin has blinded humanity not to fully understand the depth of God's unchanging love for us. Number two, love has become a cheap commodity. We distort love by expressing it inappropriately, e.g. in cases of incest, adultery, and rape. The fourth is engaging in emotional infidelity by being physically present yet psychologically absent. That is, our mind and our heart is far away to someone else. Number four, we receive and interpret God's love for us based on how we feel in the moment in the now. Thus, our prayers tell, tend to follow the give me, give me this syndrome because we view God only as a God of benefit. Then we project a fuzzy feeling towards him when things go wrong or we do not receive what we want. Yet God is a God of delay, but he is not a God of denier. When he delays, he has something special for you. It's not a denier. Six, we get blindsided or blame God for circumstances instead of trusting his will and heart, regardless of our circumstances. Number seven, sometimes we walk the road, hanging our heads, 
feeling worthless, broken, rejected, betrayed, and abandoned due to what people think or said or did to us. Little did we realize the emotional roller coaster has distorted our understanding of love and the view of God for us. God looks at us as priceless sons and daughters and he loves us unconditionally. Another thing we need to understand, love is a principle and not a feeling. Can you imagine to love your enemies, do good to them who despitefully use you? Of course it's not a, a feeling, it's a principle. Loving others unconditionally is not a piece of cake either. It doesn't come easy to us as humans. See, loving others unconditionally is loving the unlovable. Even when a person is undeserving of your love, you love him not because you want your love or he deserves your love, but because he needs it. What is love in the eyes of God? God's love is unchanging. It is consistent, steadfast, and everlasting. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He says, yeah, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That's Jeremiah 31, verse 3. The cross is the true manifestation and reflection of God's unconditional love towards us, sinners like you and me. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. God assures that God loves us with an everlasting love. John 3, verse 16 expresses the supreme understanding of God's love. In, through Jesus Christ, God is revered. God redeemed us and saved us from the penalty of sins through the blood of his only begotten son. He who bled and died for undeserving undivers- sinners like you and me and adopted us as his sons and daughters so that we can be reconciled to him and be promised of eternal love, life. What a matchless life. Now let's look at God's assurances of his love for us. God love, God's love is unchanging. It is consistent. It is steadfast. It is everlasting. For he is the same yesterday, today, today. And tomorrow. I like what the psalmist says. He says, I've been young and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. That's Psalms 37, verse 21. God never forsakes us or leaves us, He is emotionally and physically present. He invites us by saying, Hey, when you are in trouble, dial heavens 911. That's Jeremiah 33, verse 3. God is dreaming about us. That's Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He has planned for us not to harm us. What love. He supplies our needs according to his bank account in glory. That's Philippians 4. Verse 19, you know, in my quest for understanding or gaining God's love, his love with his bride, the church, I was refreshed, humbled, and empowered by an awesome, beautiful, soothing, but sobering love letter, punctuated with Bible verses. This letter 
is presented in www.fatherslove.com. You can read it for yourself. It will touch you. It will bring chills to you as it brought chills to my spine. I will read this letter in your hearing. My child, says God, you may not know me, but I know you and everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways, even your hair in your head are numbered, for you were, you were made in my image. In me, you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. I have been misrepresented by those who do not know me. I am not distant or angry, but I am complete. I am the complete expression of love. I knew you even when you were still in your mother's womb. I chose you when I planned creation. You were not a mistake. For all your days are written in my book. I determined the exact time when you will be born, where you would live. You are fearfully, you are and wonderfully made. I knitted you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. It is my desire to lavish you with all my love, simply because you are my child and um, your father. I love you with all my heart and desire to establish you. I want to show great and marvelous things to you. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you even those desires. I'm able to do more exceedingly above all that you want or think. For I am a great encourager and provider. I am also a father who comforts you in all troubles. When you are broken, I am close by. As a shepherd, I carry you as a lamb close to my heart. One day, I will wipe all your ears, your, your tears from your eyes. I will take you away. I'll take away all your pain. You have suffered in this cruel earth. I am your father and I love you as I love my son, Jesus. Jesus is the exact presentation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you and not against you. And to tell you that I am not counting your sin. I have always been your father and I will always be your father. But my question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love your dead, the almighty God. Wow. Praise God. What an assurance to us all from our heavenly father. It is available to us just for the asking, regardless of nationality, creed, color. Just say, Lord, I need your life, and I accept and I will embrace your life. Simply acknowledging him as our father, accepting him unconditionally, it will do it. Receive his love sincerely, 
obey his commands, embrace him. He's our creator and king of universe. He's our redeemer. But most importantly, he's simply a loving dad. Hallelujah. My appeal to you today is God is love and he loves us unconditionally and we should desire to love others as he loved us. Just so much.